Lord God, Father, with all our getting to get understanding that we are changed on the inside out. Beyond the storm, beyond the trial. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our sit-up spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. Welcome to my spiritual fitness class. I am Tony Brooke Brown, and we are continuing our series on love. This is part four. We have talked about the two greatest commands and then the new commandment Jesus gave us. And today, today, we are looking at Matthew 5.44. We're talking about really examining ourselves to love our enemies. Turn your Bibles there. Get your pen, paper, and your highlighter. Get your Bible. Get your electronic device, whatever you need. And we are going into this verse of scripture today. Father, in the name of Jesus, once again, we say thank you. We come before your presence with praise and thanksgiving. Father, we are just honoring you today. We hunger and thirst after righteousness. We seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. Your word says that, Father, you are a rewarder of them that diligently seek you. We want more of you. We want us, we want to gain more knowledge of who you are. We want to draw near to you that you draw near to us. So we pray that your Holy Spirit will give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, teach us today, pour into us that we would hide your word in our heart, that we would meditate on it day and night, that we would be careful to walk in it and be all that you purpose. So Father, have your way. We give praise, glory, and honor to you, the great I am, the King of Kings, El Shaddai Adonai. Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew 5, 44. I'm going to try to stay in this one verse of scripture because I really want you, when we're done, to read Matthew um, 5, verses 38 through 48 and meditate on all of it. But I just want to focus on this because as we've been going through these different instructions as to what who we're supposed to love, right, it also tells us how to do it, how to do it, right? And so... um. In this verse of scripture, Jesus is speaking, Matthew 5, 44. He says in the New King James Version, but I say to you, because he had already said, listen, you are an eye for an eye, two for two, right? <laughs> and basically love those that love you, hate those that hate you, right? But this says, I say unto you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. So now let's look at this verse of scripture. First of all, he's saying, I say to you, love your enemies. This has nothing to do with your friends, your associations, your, your family that loves you, those that pump you up, boost or boast you up, uh, praise you, those that are kind to you, those that do stuff for you. This verse of scripture says, love your enemies. What is this word enemies? This word enemies in the Greek let me do that again. Listen. It is spelled in the Greek E C H T H R O S. I'm gonna spell it again. Remember, this is a video, though. You can pause it, you can stop it, you can you can reverse it, you can bring it back, right? Forward. It's E C H T H R O S. This word for enemies is Somebody who's hostile, who hates you, an enemy. It is hatred. It is open hostility. It implies irreconcilable hostility proceeding out of a personal hatred bent on inflicting harm. It describes a person resolved to inflict harm. This word, when you think about an enemy, and you're thinking about somebody who wants to inflict harm, somebody who has deep-seated hatred. It, set, it says open hostility. Think about this. Jesus says, love them. Think about it. It could be co-workers. It may be a neighbor. It may be some, it may be a family member. It may be somebody who hates just, just hates you just because you are. Just, just, just have a deep-seated hatred, a hostility openly, telling people about you, how they can't stand you, how they want to hurt you, how they want to pay you back. You know, how, you know, tell you in your face, cussed you out, told you off. Told you to get out of their life. They're disowning you. They disregard you. They don't want to have nothing to do with you. Jesus says, love them. And mind you, he's talking about this agape love. This agape that we've been talking about. This, this love, this, this deep love. This is the love of Christ operating through you. This kind of love. 
So now you are to love those that 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 are hateful towards you. This word means hostile, hateful, in opposition. And so now think about that. And are you loving them? And so this love is action. So he tells us how to do it. How do I love my enemies? In what way? What exactly are you meaning, Jesus? And this is what he tells us. He tells us. Um, hold on. He tells us to bless those who curse us. And so now those that are, you know, coming against you, those that are, you know, wishing evil upon you, you are to bless them, do good to them, which, which brings us to the, to the part of this verse. And if you read this from the NLT, the NIV and a couple others, they take this part out, but this is important. It's key. And it's in the King James and it's in um, the New King James. This is important because what it says is do good to those who hate you. This is intentional. This is an action is that you are doing good to those that hate you. This means that those that wish evil upon you, want to do harm to you. They are in opposition. They are openly hostile towards you, that you're on purpose doing good to them. You know, the verses of scripture, you know, tell us to overcome evil with good. So when we think about people that want, that are in opposition, that are coming against us, that wish evil on us, that are despising us, right? When we think about that and we have to do good to them, that's on purpose. That means that you intentionally allow the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, the word of God to operate in you and change you. So you're not retaliating. You're not paying back. You're not trying to uh, repay evil with evil, but on purpose and intentional, you are willing and surrendered and submitted to God enough. You love God enough that you're going to do what his word says, and you're going to do good to somebody who who wishes evil on you and is openly hostile to you. Picture yourself, you're at work and somebody just comes up and they cuss you out and they tell you off and they're just like, I don't like you. I don't like working with you. Or your boss tells you you're worthless. You're a no good employee, blah, blah, blah. What are you going to do? You're just like, I'm not going to let you treat me like this. I'm not going to let you talk to me like this. Are you, or are you going to do good to them that hate you? Right? Because you got to be able, see, we have to be able to function this way or how can we be effective witnesses? How can you be an effective witness for Christ? First of all, if you don't love the way he loves. But secondly, witnessing to people that may be openly hateful to you because of your faith, which brings us to the last part of this verse that says, and pray for those who spitefully use and persecute you. See, there's going to be people that don't like you, that hate you just because of your faith. If you are openly preaching the gospel and ministering Jesus Christ and the love of God and people oppose that, or they believe something different, they're going to persecute you. They're going to come against you. They're going to talk about you. They're not going to like you because of your faith. And so to persecute, this word for persecute in the Greek is D-I-O-K-O. -O. And it means to make, to run, to flee, to make, to drive away, um, to try to catch a person or a thing, to run after, to pursue. It means to harass, to trouble, to mistreat. So people will mistreat you. People will talk about you, harass you, cause trouble for you because of your faith, because of your belief. People are going to hate you. There's people that are going to spitefully use you. People that will come against you for no reason at all. But you are instructed to love your enemies. So you're blessing those that curse you. And you are intentionally doing good to those who hate you. That means they're not doing anything good for you. They're trying to tear you down. They want to destroy you. They want to harass you. They want to come after you. They want to chase you down. But you're doing good. And so you're being kind to them. You're overcoming evil with good. You're speaking words of love and hope and faith. You're speaking the wisdom of God. Operating in the power of God. And so now you're looking at the fact that you have to act 
opposite from how they're treating you. Your enemies, you have to treat them with love because we were enemies of the cross, enemies of God, rebelling against God. And he sent his son that the word says, while we were yet in sin, Christ died. While we were rebelling against God, in opposition to God, disobeying God, Christ died for us so we could have eternal life and be reconciled to God. He reconciled us to himself. He made a way for us to be in right standing with him when we hated him, when we despised his word, when we were turning against him, when we were in opposition, when we were resisting his instruction, when we were turning a deaf ear to his word. He sent his son to die for us. And made a way out of no way, extending grace and mercy to us. And this is what Jesus is telling us to do for those that oppose us. That we still want to see them saved and delivered if they don't know Christ. We still want them to have eternal life. We still want to see them healed from their pain and delivered from their bondage. And, and delivered from the power of Satan to the power of God to the point where we will love them anyway and do good to them. And it tells us to do this. We are instructed, right, to love them in such a manner that it is evident that no matter what they do, we still want to see them experience the love of God that he made available to us. Look with me in um, just real quick in Proverbs 25. Proverbs 20, you're like, what do you mean? Bless those that curse us. Do good to them that hate you. What do you mean? And this is just an example. Proverbs 25. And we're looking at verse 21. And this is what it says. Write it down. If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. This is an example. This means that somebody who hates you and despises you is openly hostile towards you. If they're hungry, you feed them. If they're thirsty, you give them something to drink. You're going to give them what they need, even though they hate you, even though they're talking about you, even though they resent you, even though they want to see you hurt, they're mistreating you. They're hostile towards you, but they're hungry. You're going to give them something to eat. You're going to overcome evil with good. You're going to love them anyway. Now think about Think about how you're treating those that have hurt you, harmed you, come against you. Have you forgiven them? Have you really? Do you really love them? Do you want to see them saved if they don't know Jesus? Do you want them to have right relationship with God? Do you want to see them healed from the inside out, from the core, from the root? Then you got to show the love of God because that's what Jesus did. Showed us God's love right by dying on the cross. He showed love for us. Greater love has no man than this than to lay down his life for his friends. And 1 John 3, 16 says, because he laid his life down for us, we ought to lay our life down for the brethren. We have to learn. Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, you got to deny yourself. That means it doesn't matter what you said about me. It doesn't matter if you hate me. It doesn't matter if you're harassing me. Right. I'm not talking about abuse in a way that, you know, somebody is in an abusive relationship and somebody is literally trying to kill them. And then they just stay there and let somebody beat them and stab them and sock them and punch them. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about somebody just doesn't like you. They don't like you because of your faith. They don't like you because, you know, you're walking godly. They don't like you. And you are you are still, you know, walking in the love of God. You're still walking in faith. You're still praising the Lord. You're still willing to do good to them. You're still willing to help them. You're still willing, right? To share Christ with them, the love of God with them. It's in our walk. It's not being so self-centered that, you know, they weren't nice to me, so I'm not going to be nice to them. They roll their eyes at me. I'm going to roll their eyes, roll my eyes at you. They cut you off in traffic. Now you sticking up fingers at them. We don't do that, right? We don't do that. So we love on purpose and intentional, right? And so Practice this. Look at this. Examine yourself. Are you loving your enemies? Are you doing what Jesus said? And for your homework, go back and read all the way through verse 48 because he tells us why to do it so we can be like God. Don't you want to be? You were created in this image, but the image was marred because of sin. And now we have to get conformed into the image of Christ, according to Romans 8, 29. And Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So we can be conformed into his image and learn to lay our life down and love those that don't love us back. Remember when he was hanging on the cross, when he was in pain after he had been beaten and a, a, a crown of thorns was placed on his head and he still had whips and open wounds and blood and he was nailed to the cross and slammed in the ground. And he said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. The greatest love. Are you walking in it?
So we're going to close out in prayer. Go and meditate on this. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you, we praise you, and we thank you, God. Thank you for your love that you showed us that compels us to love others. Help us to love our enemies. Help us, Lord God, Father, to represent Christ by, Lord God, denying ourselves and taking up our cross, Lord God, and following him, following his example, walking in your word and in your will, Lord God. Father, we thank you that you loved us first and you loved us most. And so, Father, I thank you today, Lord God, for the love that you poured into us, that we can pour it into others. So help us, Lord God, strengthen us and in everything we give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Love you to life. Um, don't forget, 5.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook Live, Instagram Live. Tony Brook Brown, join us for the master's class as we study the word and go into prayer. We would love for you to join us if you've not already done so. Have an amazingly blessed day in the Lord and on purpose today. Do good to somebody who hates you. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, I'm Tony Brooke Brown. Do not buy my book, Spiritual Help for Mental Health. If you do not want to be a part of your mental healing, if you don't want to experience God's peace and his wholeness and restoration, do not buy my book. But otherwise, check it out. Spiritual Help for Mental Health.